Hi, I'm Susan Curry. I'm the director of the Tompkins County Public Library. And we've had a really exciting event here today. It was a storyteller's event. It's where we invited people to come and share their stories about the library and why the library is important. I'm going to be on Facebook. I'm going to reshare it. So I grew up moving around a lot. And one of the first things we would do in every new town that we lived in was to find the library. And that allowed me to have a sense of stability and similarity in all the towns that I lived in. Uh, I learned to read very early and I also was a weird little kid and so it enabled me to check out college textbooks when I was seven or eight years old and to read about things that I wouldn't have had access to otherwise. And um, one of the most important things about my young daughter is that she loves to read and she's just now learning to read and she loves books and it's very very hard for me to not get really overexcited and push reading on her um, because I want her to love it so much. So I'm, I'm trying to be cool and hold back and so far she's engaged. I'm here in the Tom County Public Library and part of the story coming and, and it can come out in the middle of the more AI. Uh, and be great. There's no social interaction. I know it was, it was just like that. It was, but if it came to teaching, yeah. Meeting with his patients, he was great. Roger was a great, a great teacher, but he would not engage with you on uh, you know, what do you like. So, what's life like? Um, no, no, no small talk. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, remember the, uh, the, the 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 novel by Ham Potok, uh, the Chosen, Chosen. Yeah. and he talked about. He said one day he looked at his son, and he said he had no soul, and it really grieved him. He said. You know, he, the way he, his reaction watching the baseball game or watching the movie somebody killed, his reaction was flat. He said it grieved him. And I said, Rabbi, that my son has no soul. And he was just one of the things. So he was talking to you know this his other friend, and yeah, this guy went on and read. Just wanted to see read psychology and all of that. But that was the thing that struck me in that book. It was Annie Oakley. Yes. And so absolutely, and it, when you were telling it, it made me wonder about how many more of us there are and about the women's part. And now what are we doing now actively to bring these stories to young girls? I know. Because I, I think we've got to do it. <gasps> we do. We do. We, we have to. Do. We do. have to. Oh, my God. So. <laughs> well, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's true. Okay, so Beth Midler grew up in Hawaii. A lot of people don't know that. She's from Hawaii. She grew up in like a, a little ranch house in the edge of the, um, like a sugarcane plantation. Her father painted houses for the army. So, I mean, that was their life. She tells a story that every Saturday morning, her mother would take her and her brother into Honolulu and drop them at the library. Like, slow down, they would jump out, and they would stay at the library all day on Saturday with literally, like, you know, nothing to do, little kids. She says wandering around this glorious library in Honolulu is how she eventually found the um, audio section where they had a record player and they had records and there was this very bored librarian who introduced her to show tunes. And she said she gave me like these giant like headphones and she said so every Saturday I would just plug in and just listen to show tunes all day long. It's fascinating to me. It's just fascinating. I mean, she, there are incredible stories where people would come up and meet him and they'd say, Dr. Du Bois, such an honor to meet you. And he'd say, oh, and you are? <laughs> and they'd say, and they'd say, and where do you go to school? And this, actually, this was um, John O. Franklin. Now, let me ask you, do you want me to tell you my library story? Clean up my studio. <laughs>